Greetings everyone, Jonathan here, usual information below to check me out if you happen to like what I'm saying. But that being said, this is Wednesday night, you talk like a pirate day, and amazingly enough today's topic has nothing to do with piracy, I'm totally screwing up talk like a pirate day, can you blame me? Uh, but I do want to talk about an issue that I've been trying to wrap my head around for a, uh, about the past 24 hours, and it was actually an issue reported by the great intellectual property blogger Eric Goldman. Um, I'm going to put a link to his blog and to um, the article in question, which actually was on Forbes, in the description, so check them both out. But no, Eric Goldman talked about a very interesting case involving Cafe Press. Cafe Press, for those who have never heard of them, is a print-on-demand site where they will take your name, your photo, your logo, your whatever, and print it on all kinds of crazy crap from t-shirts to mouse pads to mugs and all kinds of wonderful stuff. Very diverse business that's print-on-demand stuff is. But since it does host user-generated content, like like any user-generated content, some users don't play so nice. <clears throat> and they upload content that is infringing upon trademarks or copyrights, and they have a system in place for dealing with it. And, and some people say it's great, and some people say it's not. I don't know. I'm not getting into that. That's not the point. Um, the point is this. Apparently, some users were using or having stuff printed with Born to Rock on it, and apparently some guy somewhere actually holds a trademark for that on t-shirts as it relates to electric guitars at the very least. And he filed several trademark takedowns with uh, Cafe Press, and Cafe Press was kind of hit and miss, agreeing to remove some, but ag not agreeing to remove others, based upon whether or not they felt the actual use was infringing their trademark, and eventually they got fed up and they sued Cafe Press for trademark infringement. Now. No one actually seems to expect Cafe Press to lose this lawsuit. But to understand the problem, we have to understand a little bit about how litigation works. You see, if I sue someone or someone sues me, we have a period of discovery and some back and forth motions where we present some evidence and some arguments to a judge. And we've and whoever is the defendant usually applies for what is called a summary judgment, which is basically their way of saying, look, judge, this case is ridiculous. I want it thrown out now. I don't want this. There's no reason for this to go to a jury. This is just stupid. And the judge, at their discretion, can say that this case is so ridiculous and the facts of the case are so obvious that, yes, it should never reach a jury, and boom, the case is tossed before it goes anywhere. And if you are the defendant, that is very, very good because what that does is it gets rid of the case before you have to spend a lot of money or time defending him. And that's exactly what Cafe Press tried to do in this case. They put out, a, I'm not going to go into the details, they're going to say they put out a whole bunch of arguments they thought could be resolved at the summary judgment phase, put out a whole bunch of facts they thought would resolve the issue before it ever needed to go to a trial, and the judge has shot it down. Now to be clear, this is not a victory for the plaintiff in this case. They're not saying that the trademarks are valid and that Cafe Press and Friends are just saying that the evidence presented doesn't give enough to toss it before it goes to a jury or a full trial. And that's kind of the problem. Cafe Press, if it's going to go the distance and defend this case in front of a jury, it's going to be very expensive, it's going to be very time consuming, and they are going to lose way more money than they would ever gain by selling these items, even if they're legitimate. And that kind of puts them up against the wall on this one, because even though they have rights they can defend, and there's very strong arguments in this case that the mark itself is questionable, the um, arguments that Cafe Press is liable or questionable, there's a whole lot of reasons why Cafe Press should win this case, but to win it, they're going to have to go to distance and spend the money, and it doesn't make sense from a business standpoint to do that. So a lot of people, including Eric Goldman, are wondering how Cafe Press is going to respond to this. Are they going to start you know, trying to monitor what's being uploaded to the site and start trying, you know, weed out trademark infringing that way. Well, that's not going to scale. It's very time consuming. That's an expense unto itself. Are they going to just start blindly taking down things that trademark holders believe is infringing? That could raise another set of issues because trademark isn't like copyright where merely copying something is an infringement. So it's not, and there's no DMCA-like protection here necessarily. Um, so that's another issue. So what are they going to do? How are they going to handle this? And it's a really thorny subject. I think what they're actually going to wind up doing is fighting this case, winning it, and then just hoping no other trademark holders get this stupid idea again. But that's the problem. It's inevitably they are. And if a bunch of trademark holders go, hey, we don't like Cafe Press, they can all sue and pretty much drown the company in legal debt. And there's no easy way for Cafe Press to end these lawsuits or recoup its legal fees. And... This is a problem for the business, and it's not just a problem for Cafe Press, it's a problem for other sites to do the same thing, think like Zazzle, for example. So this is a 
potentially big threat to the industry and it's written around the fact that with a uh, trademark most of the issues you deal with and would get a case dismissed have to be taken to a trial and have to be analyzed on a case-by-case -case basis which is like I said expensive and time-consuming so what's Cafe Press gonna do I don't know but they, I, like I said, I don't anticipate they're going to lose this, but I do anticipate that they're going to spend a lot of money fighting this, and they're probably going to have to rethink their trademark policy. So I don't have easy answers here. But I just kind of wanted to highlight this case because it's a strange and bizarre situation where Cafe Press can be doing something that's completely legal, but can be functionally and practically illegal at the same time. Very bizarre. So what do you think Cafe Press should do? Let me know in the comments. Let me know uh, via email. Let me know any way you want. Post it on the Facebooks, the Twitter. I want to hear what you think Cafe Press should do. So until next time, though, this is Jonathan Bailey signing off.